the, this idea of this cautionary benchmark that sets out the physical scale of the problem that we face is an act of warning, it's an act of protest, it's an act for change. And it's also an act to protect the environment and humanity. As part of LFA 2022, we unveiled five new benches in the Royal Docks as part of the Pews and Purchase design competition with the Royal Docks team. Now in its third edition, this series of five benches aims to improve London public realm, celebrate emerging architectural talent and connect people with the buildings and spaces around them. We caught up with each of the winning designers to find out the story behind the benches. Here, Andre tells us about his bench, a cautionary benchmark. Hi, I'm Andre Kong and I designed the cautionary benchmark. As the name suggests, a cautionary benchmark is about highlighting the mammoth challenge that humanity faces in terms of slowing down the climate crisis and to halt sea level rise and prevent flooding from becoming more frequent and severe, which it is expected to become and because its impact isn't necessarily very apparent or at least explicitly visible in real time sometimes people it's challenging for us to kind of grasp the sheer magnitude of the problem and so this bench being on two levels tries to physically visualize that that benchmark so one of the levels of the bench is for use today, which is for sitting. And the second level, which is unreachable today, is the level that you would be sat at during a severe tidal storm uh, in 2030, which is above 2.6 metres. So this kind of contrast also with the, the change in colour as you go up, that kind of alerts you to this kind of red zone that we hopefully won't get to, but it invites passers-by to sit and look out onto the water in front of the college and to consider and reflect on the actions that will lead to the bench level that's kind of looming above you and urging you to join in on the action against climate change. When I designed it, I definitely started by brainstorming how you could, with a bench, expose the challenges of climate change as an act of protest or an, an act of alert and then I kind of sketched out many different ideas and then very quickly this idea of two different levels emerged this idea of a future level of of where you might be sat at in a climate crisis situation and the the level that you can sit at now as a as visual benchmark of these two points so kind of almost being within a graph. So you often see these graphs showing the sea level rise or flooding levels, but actually to be able to sit in a kind of a graph uh, is, is something a lot more powerful because it really allows you to see the scale of the problem at one-to-one. -one. So I felt like this was a strong idea. And so then it was a case of testing different ways of expressing these two levels. So originally I even thought maybe we don't even have a bench to sit on at the low level because there's no time to sit. It's just time to act. And you just have this really tall bench at the 2.6 meters. But actually I felt like that having that comparison of the two levels of like what it is today and what it will be in the future is, is more powerful and also creates a more interesting structure to be able to interact with and not just look at. The bench was designed specifically thinking about the Royal Docks context so when I looked at uh, a map that's produced by NASA and Climate Central that's available online, it's this interactive tool that you can see the different uh, levels of the water that are expected at diff in different years, depending on a series of factors in terms of flooding severity, luck, and, and like how on track we are with the IPCC recommendations. All of those aspects that you can control, it, but then basically in a kind of a medium case scenario, a, lo a large part of London, including the Royal Docks, are predicted to be subject to regular flooding by 2030. And that's what this 2.6 metres refers to. And so 
seeing this data and seeing the data within the context of which the bench is going to be part of, it seemed appropriate to really highlight that kind of challenge that we are facing in this particular place. So it's not just an abstract benchmark it's a specific benchmark for this particular place. And then in terms of the design and the materiality and the architectural language of the bench itself also draws a lot from the dock context and the maritime language using these kind of galvanized tubes and standard clamp connections that are seen in other parts of the Royal Docks, like the tidal basin pumping station, or even actually the Thames barrier itself, where you see a lot of handrails and a lot of the kind of infrastructural pieces that are made from these standard connections and pipe elements, which was also important in terms of the design being a kit of parts, being able to be disassembled and then in the future reused in its future life so the materials themselves can can be sustainable and have a life after they are no longer a bench. And actually the materials themselves, not only will they hopefully have this life after they are a bench, but the pipes themselves have had a previous life so they're not new. It was a big challenge to find these materials that we could transform into this bench but it was definitely worth the extra effort because it speaks to the very message of the, of the bench, which is that we need to design and build in a more sustainable way, thinking about how we can reuse materials in the future. The specific context of the bench being in front of the UTC College, I think is really important because it presents a great opportunity for the people who most see it and sit on it and interact with it to be students who are studying engineering and architecture and design. Well, hopefully the bench will inspire and alert that next generation of, of students who are in college today and who will graduate into thinking and uh, imagining new ways of tackling the climate crisis from all different angles. So the construction industry today and the built environment generally account for almost 40% of carbon emissions. So the designers and engineers of buildings tomorrow have this enormous responsibility in tackling this crisis. So with the bench standing in front of the college as a reminder to these students of the absolute urgency to only design it in a sustainable way from now on, I think is, is really great and important in terms of the location. The other great aspect about building this bench right in front of UTC was the ability to have the students get involved and, and be a part of building the process and building the actual bench itself, which makes everybody feel included and involved in, and it also offers a great learning opportunity for design uh, students to see how something goes from uh, an idea to, to being made within a very short period of time. I really wanted to enter this year because of the theme of the LFA. So the theme of ACT, the, this idea of this cautionary benchmark that sets out the physical scale of the problem that we face is an act of warning, it's an act of protest, it's an act for change. And it's also an act to protect the environment and humanity. So it portrays the present and a bit like a Greek tragedy, it shows a potential tragic future unless we act now. Thanks for listening to this conversation. If you've enjoyed the conversation and would like to listen to more like this, search for Building Sounds on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you find your favourite podcasts.